Hi, welcome to another segment of Credit Matters TV. I am Edgar Diaz, Director for Financial Institutions in Brazil, and today I'm joined by Guilherme Machado to talk about the recent article published, Brazilian Banks Rising Deferred Tax Assets Jeopardizes Quality of Capital. So, Guilherme, why are DTAs increasing for Brazilian banks? Brazilian banks have historically posted high DTA balances from temporary differences due to an accounting discrepancy between the tax book and the income accounting book in the treatment of loan loss reserves expenses, which are not tax deductible. Essentially, the DTAs are created due to the timing mismatch of loan loss provisions that will only be accounted as an expenses for tax purpose when there is a credit loss. As market and economic conditions in Brazil deteriorate, banks have been forced to increase the reserves due to the deteriorating asset quality. As a consequence, DTAs resulting from temporary difference have spiked. In September 2015, the Brazilian government approved law number 13169, which increased the rate for social contribution taxes to 20% from 15 for the period between September 2015 and December 2018. Banks responded to the increase in tax rate by constituting a supplement to the social contribution tax credit, which resulted in an accounting gain and had a positive impact on results. As a conservative measure, most banks converted this balance into additional general reserves for loan losses, thus creating more DTAs. Moreover, in 2015, banks recorded a decline in the fair value of their trading securities, which are also non-deductible expenses for tax purpose. Those expenses generated DTAs on temporary difference, inflating the balances even further. Essentially, higher allowances for loan losses, adjustments to the fair value of trading securities, and increasing the rate of social contribution tax have significantly increased Brazilian banks' deferred tax assets in 2015. And how does Brazil stand in comparison with other Latin American countries? As a consequence of the higher DTAs, the share of net DTAs in the large bank's total equity has increased to nearly 52% in December 15 from a already high figure of 35% one year before. If we consider the entire Brazilian financial system, net DTAs represents 41% of total equity. Those levels far exceed the level for other financial systems in Latin America, such as Chilean banks, where DTAs to total equity ravaged uh, roughly 16%, followed by Mexico 10%, Peru 6%, Colombia 5%, and Argentina 3%. What is the regulatory treatment of DTAs in Brazil? In Brazil, banks are implementing Basel III on a phasing schedule, so deductions will gradually increase each year until 2019. Still, DTAs related to allowances for loan losses will not be deductible from capital, due to Brazilian law number 12838 from 2013, which made those tax credits convertible into cash or government claims when the bank has incurred on net losses. This is similar to legislation in Italy, where those DTAs are also convertible. Do we expect DTAs to continue to increase, and if so, what is the impact on banks' creditworthiness? We believe DTAs will continue to increase as long as the accounting discrepancy between the tax book and the income accounting book regarding the treatment for loan loss reserves exists, which weakens the bank's quality of capital, as DTAs are a potential fragile buffer against losses. Given that a bank's ability to realize and convert DTAs relies on taxable income, local legislation, and tax rules, it seems clear to us that as tough economic conditions take the toll on Brazilian banks' asset quality and profitability, a spike in deferred tax assets will only make the situation for banks even more challenging. Thank you for watching another segment of Credit Matters TV.